This chandelier is quite a showstopper. It stretches more than three feet high and wide with 24 elegant arms. It's decorated with clear and red crystal and a gilded hurricane shade over each light. To make the crystal, they melt silica sand in a furnace, along with lead, potash, and several other ingredients. The materials combine to make crystal heavier and more sparkling than glass. To make each chandelier arm, a crystal blower gathers some molten crystal on the end of his blowpipe, then shapes the arm with a series of blocks and molds. He makes a channel down the middle for the arm's electrical wiring. Next, two master crystal blowers work together to pull and twist the crystal into the arm's rope-like design. This maneuver requires tremendous expertise. To achieve the correct diameter, these craftsmen must stretch the crystal exactly right. Next, they put it in a chandelier arm mold and snip off the excess on both ends. They blow cold air to solidify the crystal. Another craftsman inspects the chandelier arm, checking the shape, measurements, and channel for the electrical wiring. Next, a pair of craftsmen make the bowl-shaped bottom of the chandelier. Using traditional techniques, they place molten crystal in a mold, then place the mold in a press. The crystal chandelier parts are cooled down in an oven. The gradual decrease in temperature slowly releases tension in the crystal. This prevents cracking. Straight out of the furnace, the crystal is 2280 degrees. It continues to be pliable until it reaches about 1202 degrees. It cools rapidly, so as the craftsmen work, they must regularly reheat the crystal in a smaller furnace. The freshly molded crystal tends to have a rough surface, so they use heat from a blowtorch to smooth it out. These holders support the hurricane shades on the arms. This company produces its signature shade of red crystal by adding 24 karat gold powder to the raw materials in the furnace. The color emerges after the molded piece is reheated in an oven to just over 1,000 degrees. A crystal blower makes the hurricane shades. First, he rolls a starting shape at the end of his blowpipe. Then, with pliers, he narrows and stretches one end to form a neck. By now, the crystal has cooled, so he reheats it before continuing. Next, he inserts the crystal into a foot pedal operated mold installed in the floor. He then turns the pipe and blows through it to expand the crystal to the mold shape. Once the hurricane shade has cooled, artisans apply an elaborate 24 karat gold decal. With a paintbrush, they also apply raised gilding and 24 karat gold paste. They heat the shade to fuse the gold to the crystal, then polish the gold with an agate stone. Every part of the crystal chandelier is handmade, and the entire chandelier is manually assembled. However, some of the crystal parts require prep work before assembly. The arms have a light socket at one end wired to a connector at the other. All 24 arms mount to a round tray. Beneath it, the connectors link to the main wires running down the center of the chandelier. The chandelier's ornate bottom hides it all. The electrical sockets that hold the light bulbs are hidden inside metal sleeves painted white to look like candles. The gilded hurricane shades go over the candles and sit snugly in the holders. This stunning crystal chandelier casts sparkling light, easily making it the focal point of the room.